Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and got a very interesting uh, couple of things here going on I wanted to share with you. This here it happens to be Syria's military uh, Twitter account. Quite a few people that I actually know do follow here. And uh, they're reporting that uh, two hours ago that the SAA and allies are in position. The Russian Navy and the Russian Air Force is ready. From now on, the final countdown to launch Operation Dawn of Victory begins. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We, I'd actually thought that this had already began at one point when they, 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 they themselves had actually stated just uh, yesterday uh, that they had already started some kind of operation, but undoubtedly it wasn't the dawn of victory. I think what it was, it was the ground operation that they were advancing inside of Aleppo. But now they're they're stating here on their own Twitter page here that they are that actually the Russian Navy and the Russian Air Force is ready, and from now on the final countdown to launch the dawn of victory uh, has begun. So. Very serious issue there. We need to kind of keep an eye on that. I also saw here on a uh, video here that was posted also on Twitter that um, they had Sukhois flying overhead uh, there in Syria there. Uh, I don't know if that's a tanker they're following or whatever, but there were two Sukhois seen over there. I think that was around Idlib, uh, which is just to the west of Aleppo. Um, further news there as well. Uh, this uh, was actually posted on Twitter by Murad Gaz Gazdiev. A uh, guy I follow on Twitter, he's an RT uh, reporter, actually in Aleppo, and I uh, thought it was kind of interesting when he posted this on Twitter, he says, he said, Brexit, Donald Trump becoming president, and now this? He said, I've seen it all. Well, it, it's kind of interesting because the Daily Sabah uh, diplomacy, the English language here, says Turkey warns citizens traveling to the U.S. amid anti-Trump protests. Turkey's foreign ministry has issued a travel warning concerning the United States of America because of all the protests. And they are. They're going on everywhere. And, you know, earlier... When I did the, I did a, a broadcast earlier today, and or, or either last night, I want to forget exactly when, but uh, I had used in the in the title FEMA camps now, uh, now ready to open. And I know that's a little bit facetious in saying that. I'm not saying that they're actually going to open. What my point is when I say something like that, I'm trying to get American people to wake up at what they're doing. This is exactly what they want. This is what the Obama administration wants. They want you to do this. They want you to riot. You know, maybe not publicly. They're not going to come out and say, yes, we want you to riot. We want you to tear the country all apart. But you have to understand, there has been a push to disarm the nation because the United Nations has asked Obama before, what will you do to disarm the nation? And they have been looking for an excuse to be able to, to shut the nation down and to be able to disarm it. Well, you know, I know... I know protesting is not what's going to shut the nation down. No protesting is not going to open up FEMA camps either, you know. But when things begin to get violent, when people begin to destroy property, as they had in, in Portland, Oregon, now somebody has been shot. Uh, now, how much more is that going to escalate? Not only that, but they have dragged Trump supporters out of their cars and beat them and everything else in America during these protests. I realize that there are people that are protesting in America that wanted Hillary for president and they feel like that they've been done wrong because she won the popular vote and there's more news coming out that she's even winning more of the popular vote as the numbers coming in. They said that they expect her to be up by two percentage points over Donald Trump. But this is the same thing that happened during the time with, with, uh, with Bush. Bush lost a popular vote, but he got the delegates. And they actually predicted it would be the opposite. They figured that he would win by a landslide and she would get the delegates and it'd be the other way around. It didn't happen that way. And I am in agreement with the, with the mayor of Portland, Oregon. You know, he says, he says the people, he wants them to have their First Amendment right to be able to exercise freedom of speech. And that's a good thing. But when it goes to start turning violent, that's a bad thing, and believe me, if, if the Trump supporters were to come out on the streets as well, then it would only get worse, and believe me, then martial law could end up setting in. You know, and I already know there's been some different news people saying that, that Obama's considering it. I don't know that. I've not seen any 
you know, valid reports of that as of yet. But my point is, when I made the title of that, you know, the FEMA camps opening, my whole point is, is to try to get the American people to take a serious look at their actions because that's the direction it could go. You know, not saying that they'll open FEMA camps, but my point is, they get in there and they start bringing in all of this, these martial law, and then you turn into a, it can just turn into a bad situation, guys. And this is not what we need. We don't need this in America. You know, Donald Trump has become president. We need to calm down, sit back, and see if the man will actually keep his promise, keep his words there. That's what you want to see, you know, and that's what I'm, that's what I am watching for. I appreciate the fact that he became president because when it comes to the issue going on here in Europe, when it comes to a war, uh, NATO on Russia's borders, etc., that concerns me. That's the one thing that I appreciate about him being president because he said he would not do a war. But he also said that he would uh, repeal and take away Obamacare. But that's kind of changing already. Now he's talking about you know just amending Obamacare instead. Okay. Well, it, it's the way it is with every president, right? All right, let's take a look at something else here. Suicide attack kills at least four Americans at uh, Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan. It's very much a tragedy. Our heart and prayers go out to the American families that have lost uh, their loved ones, as well as 16 that have been wounded in this attack. Uh, but one thing that caught my attention, though, was a comment by Jens Stoltenberg. And I think that the comment by Jens Stoltenberg, who is the uh, Deputy Secretary for NATO, was more so meant as a message to Donald Trump. Because as we know, Donald Trump has already been saying that he is thinking about pulling away from NATO. He's thinking about, he's already talked about uh, making the other uh, NATO members pay their fair share. And, and these are things that are perfectly legitimate to do. But his backing off from NATO is also what has made Europe uh, a little bit more concerned because they were hoping that Hillary would get in that would continue Obama's uh, press of war against Russia. So there's a lot of concern about that. So when Jens Stoltenberg says here, my thoughts go to the loved ones of those killed at uh, Bagram Airport, Airfield and the wounded. NATO stands with Afghanistan in the fight against terror. That's a message to Donald Trump. That's Ian Stoltenberg saying NATO stands with America. As he stated earlier, Ian Stoltenberg said to Donald Trump about this, he said, NATO was there during your 9-11. This is our 9-11, and they're blaming everything on Russia once again. And it's not Russia's fault. It is, Russia is not the aggressor here. And just, we got, I got a video I want to share with you guys before too long. My wife showed it to me the other day. It's very interesting. During the time that they're going through the Ukraine crisis and the protests and everything else, who's over there? John McCain egging them all on to do the riots and to do the protests. And he says, we are with you. And oh, y'all say it was Russia's fault. No, it wasn't. It's just what they want you to believe. And this is Jens again. He's trying to let Donald Trump know, we had your back, buddy, and we're with you right now, buddy. We're here for you now. Come on over here and be with us while we go over there and tackle Russia. It's a, it's a suicide mission. Oh, gosh. You know, um, let's continue on right here. Uh, this is another issue right here. Sputnik News carries this out here. Boris Johnson, uh, the foreign minister for Great Britain, uh, he is not going to be a part of an emergency meeting by the foreign ministers of Europe on Sunday, tomorrow. They're actually meeting, doing an emergency meeting. All of them are panicking over Donald Trump. All right. And he said he's not going to go. I actually thought, you know, for the first time, I think Boris Johnson actually said something intelligent here. He says, I'm not going. He says, you know, and he actually says in the article here, he says, you know, you got to look at the bright side of the thing. He says, Donald Trump becoming president is going to open up some nice new uh, uh, fields for, for, for commerce for us here. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, well, you know, Boris Johnson, you actually said something that was pretty good this time around. Uh, but uh, so, no, he's not going to that. But it is concerning to know, though, that the foreign ministers, the European Union foreign ministers are meeting uh, to consider the repercussions of Donald Trump's U.S. presidential elections victory and representative of the U.K., or excuse me, and of course, and how that is going to affect uh, all these tens of thousands of troops and now 300,000 of those being brought up to the Russian borders. It's almost like they're going up there to threaten Russia. And if they back down now, Russia will consider that a sign of weakness and they think that Russia will attack them. I don't believe Russia will attack. Even if they back down, that's the whole point that Putin's been trying to say. You know, look at what you're doing. Who knows? 
one other issue here I want to get with you guys on. This one here, uh, I think, did uh, create a little bit of confusion, but I wanted to clarify this a little bit uh, better. I, I actually need to make a correction here. For some reason, in my mind, I was seeing the Electoral College votes actually the first Monday after the election itself, the election results. And that's where I got that mixed up in my mind. No, it's December the 19th. And what I was speaking about... Uh, to make this a little bit clearer on this issue here, is that uh, it didn't have the article in front of me to be able to share it with you. RT is reporting Clinton supporters petitioned to force Electoral College to vote for her on December the 19th. Okay, according to the article here, it says, following Donald Trump's win, Hillary Clinton supporters are not giving in. They have launched an online petition calling upon the Electoral College to vote for Clinton instead of Trump. Now, by the way, when they when you do an online petition like that, you only have to have 250,000 votes to be able to get your case heard. All right? I say only. That's a lot of votes, period. But anyway, they have already uh, obtained a half million signatures to be able to do that. Now, I'm not saying, though, that it's going to flip. All right? So I don't want anybody to think you know, Steve's prophesying something like this. I don't mean it like that. What I'm saying, though, when I looked at this article right here that RT had brought out, is that if it did, if they did turn it, if for some reason they break all of the, all of the history for the United States and actually give Hillary Clinton the Electoral College word a flip and give it to her anyway, I, the only point that I wanted to make was that would definitely bring out trouble from the Trump supporters, this would turn our nation completely upside down if it were to happen. Um, in all of the history of the United States, they've never done this as, as of yet. Uh, we've seen that already. We've seen it in the case of uh, George Bush. He did not win the popular vote. Uh, we saw that it looked like Mitt Romney is being thrown under the bus uh, with, uh, with that of Obama. But nonetheless, again, they still did not... Uh, you know, the Electoral College still went with, you know, the way their states voted. And so different people have gotten in that do not win the popular vote, as is in the case here again, once again, with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. But there is pressure on uh, by this to try to get this to turn around. But see, it's not normal with, uh, with, our, with our system. So if they were, and I don't think that they are bound by law to cast it, but uh, in fact, it says here, Clinton supporters and their petition on the, on the change.org are not losing hope, though they are calling on the electors to ignore their state's votes and cast their ballots for former Secretary of Clinton. That's what they're asking them to do. And they technically have the right to do that. There's no law that bounds them that says that they have to go by popular vote. But it's never happened. It's never happened. And my only concern is, is if it did happen, now you want to talk about a nation that would go into an uproar, it would definitely go into an uproar. Uh, the, 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 the supporters of Donald Trump, very much, you have the evangelical side, but you also have the, the Second Amendment right uh, people, you know, that are for, for being able to right to bear arms and stuff. The militias, everything you could think of, you definitely bring them out in the woodworks. And you all, we already got bad enough protests going on in America, but that would definitely just kind of push everything over the edge. Um, also, uh, correct, or, uh, uh, not so much correction, but Eric Tucker, young man that did the uh, photographs of the dozen plus buses there at the Tableau conference there, he's actually wrote another article on his website. We posted uh, the, the first one that he wrote uh, on our Facebook, Israeli News Live, on our Facebook page there. Uh, he's gotten a lot of pressure. Uh, after he took photographs, and because at the time of the protests that were going on in Austin, he felt like they had bust the people in. Now, we did our own investigation on this, and uh, because there was, you know, he said, she said, going back and forth. One said, no, Tableau actually were the ones that had chartered the buses, and that this young man had only caused a big stir up on the internet. But I had a lot of respect for this young man because when he started catching the flat, he came out. He didn't just let it go. He came out and he said, you know, I apologize. It does look like maybe Tableau had actually uh, the conference, the electronics conference there that was in Austin, Texas. They did actually perhaps uh, lease the buses. Uh, we haven't seen personal proof ourselves of this. We did see one person that claimed to have actually been there a part of the conference and his 
comment section saying that yes, the buses were leased for them to go back and forth to their hotels. Uh, but we noted though, in our own investigation of this that we thought was kind of interesting because as Eric also noted, the buses were parked only a, just within a few blocks away from where the Austin uh, protests were going on. And of course, what we found out is that George Soros is a major stockholder in the Tableau Electronics, or uh, the, the, the company that was putting this on, it's got a, the largest shareholder of this, of, of this company here happens to be by George Soros. We thought that that was interesting, so we felt, still felt like that Eric did still have a valid point in what he was saying, but we will stand with Eric in the correction that he wanted to make on that as well. So Tableau is the one that chartered the buses. Who knows what the real purpose was. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.